Hello, my dear doctors. Welcome to the topic that is RA, major rheumatoid arthritis, and complications. The KBA means the knowledge based application, lectures, and question based approach that you will see in these clips that we learn that how the knowledge can be applied in a best way into the questions and their question based approach all together. So let's start by having some of the screenshot that you have already learned from the video lectures starting the complications of the rheumatoid arteries that you put the radio FM as a mnemonics. In R4 SPD system you see the pulmonary fibrosis, pneumonitis, pulmonary pleural effusion, pleurisy and pulmonary nodules and also bronchiolitis of the terms. And ocular complications that you learned that the keratoconjunctivitis Sika, keratitis, corneal ulcers, episcleritis, scleritis, and cataracts, corticosteroid, chloroquine. And also amyloidosis that you learn from here, and also other radio FM that we learned. So let's see applying the knowledges into the questions, and according to the question best approach that what we learned that we first booked look into the main question what is the most likely cause of his painful red eye so painful right eye what is the most likely cause so the scenario said that right the photograph the eye having a red eye so right sided eye having a red eye now we have to look for and think about the answer options, right? The epistleritis, pleuritis, keratitis, conjunctivitis, and anterior uveitis. So immediately after that, we need to look for the SS boxes. And second question, that what is the most likely cause for anemia? Here's the Falti syndrome, folate penicillamine, anemia of chronic disease, that we learned that anemia and rheumatoid arteries, that is, yes, once again, FGHI. Well, what are the following tests would you perform to ascertain the course of the abnormal full blood count? Yes, abnormal full blood count, so what would be the test? And what is the most likely cause for a nephrotic syndrome? with chronic kidney disease. There are options, you see the penicillamine, renal amyloidosis, NSS induced MCD, analgesic nephropathy and ibuprofen induced etin. So here's the nephrotic syndrome with the chronic kidney disease. What is the most likely cause of her breathlessness as well? Is it rheumatoid lungs or cryptogenic fibrosing alveolitis, bronchiectasis? And also the left ventricular failure and bronchiolitis obliterans. What test you would you perform to confirm your diagnosis. So, before going to the question best applications, I'd like to go first some of the explanations and some of the assist boxes. Let's start with the long standing rheumatoid arthritis, the second reduction, recurrent reduction of unilateral painful red eye as previously required the systemic steroid, the probable diagnosis is scleritis. So painful red eyes is scleritis, my dear. Painless episcleritis. The other cause of red eye in the is episcleritis and keratitis, secondary to Sjogren syndrome. The former is painless, the latter is bilateral. It is important to note that the only definitive method of differentiating scleritis from episcleritis without a history is by slit lamp examination of the eye. Recurrent episodes of scleritis may result in perforation of the sclera or sometimes the scleromalacia perforance. This is called causes of ocular involvement in the perimeter artery, episcleritis, scleritis, scleromalacia, Sjogren's syndrome, cataracts, retinopathy, and extracellular muscle involvement by tendon synovitis as well as the secondary paralysis, penicillin, dysmyasthenia as well as the mononeuritis multiplex. 
we put in into all them together in an access box and this access box is very important episcleral is a painless but unilateral but sclera is a painful unilateral radar a recurrent scleromalacia and also the scleromalacia perforans differentiation between these two without history of the pain the split limb examination in episcleritis and scleritis Yes, my dear, so cornea keratitis, usually the bilateral. In contrast, episcleritis and scleritis is an unilateral. This is very important. So once again, episcleritis, scleritis is an unilateral and painful is a scleritis, painless episcleritis. Without history of the pain, so slit limb examination play a great role. In contrast to the cornea, bilateral due to the Jogren syndrome and cataracts for the corticosteroid CEC and chloroquine bullseye retinopathy. So cornea, cataracts, chloroquine, retinopathy. So all are C rule of C that we learned. And also extensional muscle involvement by the tendon synovitis and also the paralysis due to penicillin induced myasthenia gravis or mononeuritis multiplex. So extracular muscles involvement that is by the synovitis and also the paralysis by the penicillamine paralysis by the penicillamine induced myasthenia gravis on mononeuritis multiplex here is the features of episcleritis and also the scleritis then episcleritis diffuse scleritis less painful extremely painful younger age elderly and no systemic ascendant but RA with the systemic vasculitis so yes, this scleritis is a severe form, just remember, in contrast to the episcleritis. Painless, painful, younger, elderly, no system, systemic involvement. Scleritis having the systems involvement, just remember my dear, single top. Same thing here is the episcleritis and scleritis and refer, if not resolving in the episcleritis, the scleritis is a topical and systemic steroids and refer are gently. This is diffuse lysamine green staining in a person with a severe dry eye. In addition to the scleritis, she has other problems commonly seen in the rheumatoid arthritis, include the anemia, Feldes syndrome in this scenario, and renal and respiratory involvement as well. Drugs used in the treatment of rheumatoid arthritis may themselves cause many of their complications in rheumatoid arthritis. Their knowledge of the drugs used and their complications essential in the management of patients with rheumatoid arthritis. Now let's talk on rheumatoid arthritis and anemia. The anemia is a part of pancytopenia, which in the context of this question is due to either penicillamine induced meroeplasia or hyperspherism resulting in Feldes syndrome. The former may be diagnosed by histological examination of the bone marrow and the later by demonstrating increased red cell uptake and destruction by the spleen. Cause of anemia and rheumatoid arthritis, yes, but we put right the mnemonics, the anemia, the FGHI, so F for Feldes syndrome, F for folate, G for GP and H for hemolysis and I for iron deficiency anemia. A very good, good differentiating features of F for Feldes syndrome having the hyperspheroid and mean, pancytopenia with the hyperplasia and folate deficiency pancytopenia bone marrow hyperplasia but with the megaloblast and GP means the golden penicillamine having the pancytopenia but bone marrow aplasia. Hemolysis yes autoimmune and maybe as with the pernicious anemia and iron deficiency anemia due to NSAs and also anemia of chronic disease. So once again the anemia is an FGHI and once again the Feldes syndrome is asked for sequestration study remember my dear and also the GP golden penicillamine that is a bone marrow aplasia that can be by the bone marrow aspirate and trifan biopsy. So once again the summary talk of the anemia in rheumatoid arteries and FGHI and also the diagnostic evaluations for the Feldes syndrome sequestration study, red cell sequestration study and also for the bone marrow aplasia means the GP so we need to see the bone marrow aspiration and trifan biopsy. 
Next, let's talk on the renal involvement. Yes, the low albumin, swollen ankles, and proteinuria are indicative of nephrotic syndrome, which may be due to the penicillin induced membranes going nephritis or renal amyloid complicating chronic inflammation. Other causes the renal involvement in patients with rheumatoid arthritis are as follows. So yes, once again, the box for the rheumatoid arthritis and renal involvement, there is a nephrotic syndrome. Here's the drugs. GP, both can cause the MGN, but the NSS can cause by the MCD, minimal chance disease. And renal amyloidosis, once again, nephrotic syndrome. And NSS itself can cause a variety of diseases, starting with the MCD, minimal chance disease, acute tubular interstitial nephritis, and also the renal papillary necrosis. So the very hot topic for the exam is the renal involvement, yes. So here is the nephrotic syndrome by the drugs by the GP as well as the renal amyloidosis and NSS. So yes, you see the NS and NSS. Just remember the NS and NSS, the renal involvement, that will be helpful. So let's talk further, right, the questions. And we'll try our best, right, to, to apply our knowledge is that what we learned. So yes, the likely cause of the painful rate high, there is the scleritis. So we need to look for urine dipstick, right? The data and the investigation data, as I said, the bottom line data is more important. But according to the question best approach, that what we learned that immediately after the question, main question, then the answer options, then look into the photography. So we have seen the photography. This is unilateral right eye. So what you need to know, that we need to know whether it's painful or painless. So we need the history basically to see the painful or painless red eye. So 60 year old prison lady with the rheumatoid arteries referred to the ophthalmology with a two day history of the painful right eye. So unilateral painful right eye is an episcleritis or scleritis. So episcleritis is painless. So once again painful is a scleritis. Diagnosis done. Scleritis once again scleritis, once again the diagnosis, the scleritis. Second question, what is the most likely cause of for her anemia? So once again, we'll focus on to any of the photography related to anemia. So once again, let's talk urine dipstick is a proteinuria. There's a renal urine 3 plus. Yes. Maybe the nephrotic syndrome, chest X and normal, remitted factor is positive, 1 in 460. Immunoelectrophoresis, increased gamma globulin band, it does mean the inflammatory markers. And also the IgG, IgG and IgM, you see, all are increased here. So here is a learning point that we are learning some of the normal ranges of starting with the GAM. So if you start from M, you see the 0 0.4 to 2, then double 0 0.8 to 4, then double once again 8 to 18. So say with me 0 0.4 to 2, then 0 0.8 to 4, and 4, 8, 8 to 18. So you can remember 0 0.4 then 2, 0 0.8, 4, and 8 to 4, 18. So yes, this is also the in, inflammatory markers and albumin low, this is also the inflammatory markers here. Yeah. And you see the alkaline phosphatase and also calcium and phosphate are normal, creatinine, urea normal, potassium, sodium normal, folate normal, ESR raised, MCV normal, along with you see the platelets low, WBC low, and also hemoglobin is low. So this is the pancytopenia with the normal cytic normal chromic anemia, MCV is normal with the raised ESR. Yes, the rheumatoid arthritis is a typical pictures. 
rheumatoid arthritis, all right, with pancytopenia. So what we learned that F, the yes, once again, they start with F for Faltis syndrome. Faltis syndrome needs that. Raltis, rheumatoid arthritis, once again, L for low WBC, is a low WBC, and splenomegaly. So we need the splenomegaly to diagnose Faltis syndrome. So examination findings that we need. So examination of our hands, feed evidence of generalized symmetrical deforming atrophy with no clubbing, heart rate, blood pressure, jugular vein, oscillation lungs, fills, inspiratory crackles on the both pages on coughing. And examination of the abdomen, yes, there is a palpable spleen three centimeters below the coastal margin. And the liver was not palpable, there is no ascites. So yes, having a spinomegaly, Pancytopenia, a likely diagnosis, the Faltis syndrome. Second, F for folate deficiency, but the folate deficiency MCV should be macrocytosis and it should be 105, more than 105, more than 110, more than 115, respectively, yes, the more and more likely of folate deficiency. Yes, once again, the golden penicillamine, you once again, they can produce pancytopenia. Here is the most important feature of so the bone marrow aspiration revealed that the dry tab. So this dry tab will give us a lot of information altogether. Because in bone marrow study that we learned that in Feltis syndrome is due to the hypersplenism, so the bone marrow will be the hyperplastic. In contrast, FG, G for golden penicillamine, penicillamine can cause, once again, pancytopenia as well as the bone marrow aplasia. So renal biopsy performed the cause of the massive proteinuria as follows. So, once again, having a massive proteinuria, having a low albumin, once again, let's see in the scenario what is written of nephrotic syndrome. So yes, the uh, visual acuity normal, she had a similar problem, one year back, required therapy with oral steroids. She was diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis 19 years back. Initial treatment of NSAs, then chloroquine, then she was successfully managed a combination of ibuprofen and penicillamine. We got a penicillamine. So the likely diagnosis of the anemia is a penicillamine induced pancytopenia. So that's really important here. And also the penicillamine, that what we learned penicillamine. We learned the penicillamine can cause Golden penicillamine can cause nephrotic syndrome. In rheumatoid arteries, the renal involvement, NS and NSAs, so nephrotic syndrome caused by GP, once again, golden penicillamine, by producing MGN, or can be caused by nephrotic syndrome by also NSAs, and also the renal amyloidosis as well. So, Let's see further. Which of the following tests would you perform to ascertain the cause of abnormal FBC? So the bone marrow trifine biopsy may give us some of the important clues of abnormal FBC, means the pancytopenia. Because we got the dry tap, so we need to do a trifine biopsy to confirm, to differentiate in between the Faltis syndrome as well as the bone marrow aplasia caused by GP. And what is the most likely cause of the nephrotic syndrome with the chronic kidney disease? Yes, the penicillin induced MGN, the nephrotic syndrome and renal amyloidosis, another possibility. But here is the penicillin having the pancytopenia, once again bone marrow aplasia by the dry tap and also the nephrotic syndrome a very good like to the penicillamine is a likely diagnosis here. What is the most likely cause of her breathlessness? Once again, 
So let's look into the full scenarios. So having an auscultation, all right, examination findings that uh, the blood pressure and also lung pressure find inspiratory crackles at the both lung bases which persisted after coughing. So inspiratory crackles, my lad, is very important. That is the lung fibrosis. Means the pulmonary fibrosis due to rheumatoid arthritis. So the rheumatoid lungs is a likely diagnosis, but the two differentiating features in rheumatoid lungs, clubbing absent, but in cryptogenic fibrosing alveolitis, that is the C4 cryptogenic C4 clubbing is present. This is the important differentiating findings that we need to focus on to the scenarios so that we can get yes, the breathlessness due to rheumatoid lungs or CFA. And these differentiating points also will be very discussed, very well discussed in the chapter of respiratory system as well. So yes, the cryptogenic fibrosing alveolitis needs the clubbing, bilateral hands clubbing. Yes. As because the, the examination of the hands and feet reveal evidence of generalized symmetrical deforming with no clubbing, that is very important findings here. Yeah, no clubbing means the rheumatoid lungs having fine in, in spiritual crackles at the long both lung bases. So sometimes we say that the cough, here is a cough. I say right the clubbing, cough, clubbing and crackles. Cough, clubbing and crackles, these three important points and the combinations leads to 3C as well. The first C stands on, if I'm writing the C, clubbing, cough, clubbing, crackles leads to the 3C. This 3C means really C4, CFA, C4, CF means the cystic fibrosis means the bronchiectasis. So within the bracket we can write the bronchiectasis. And third C for the cancer. Yes, my dear. So we need to know the three C leads to the three C. Means the cough. Patient comes up with the cough. You found the clubbing uh, in the hands and you found the crackles on the lung basis. You should think about, yes, CFA, CF and cancer. So no clubbing is the CFA is less likely possible. So only this lung fibrosis is related to the rheumatoid arthritis that we called rheumatoid lungs. So possibly rheumatoid lungs is a cause of breathlessness. So what test that you will perform to confirm your diagnosis? Now, of course, that is the pulmonary function test with the Casio will give us the confirmed diagnosis here. So let's talk further about some of the, yes, the correct answer is rating the scleritis, penicillamine is the cause of anemia, and bone marrow trifend biopsy, yes, to differentiate in between the penicillamine, induced aplasia or the Felty syndrome. Yes, the penicillin induced the MGN. The biopsy finding the spike in the nephrotic syndrome. You see the microgram of the membranes are showing the prominent glomerular basement membrane spikes. Spikes and dome patterns. Yes. So glomerular basement membrane, yes, once again show the membrane spikes. So these membrane spikes, once again, that is MGN, all right? And this MGN also will be discussed in the nephrology chapter as well. What is the most likely cause of our breathlessness? Of course, the rheumatoid lungs because of clubbing absent. And what tests will perform? Because the earliest detection possible by the pulmonary function test with KCO, that's why. What test will you perform first? And here's the HRCD can diagnose the lung fibrosis as well but the later. 
Now let's face another question, all right? According to the question best approach, right? What you need to focus on to the what is the most likely step you'll do for our case. Stop penis in the mind, start his inhibitor, and your renal biopsy, and enjoy view and start IV method prednisol. Immediately after that we'll focus on to the scenarios having the photography, but no photography, so start with the data. So data showed that the protein three plus having the albumin low. Yes, that is a clues of nephrotic syndrome. So yes, the penicillin can cause the nephrotic syndrome with the alkaline phosphate bilirubin is normal, creatinine, urea normal, potassium, sodium normal. But having a platelet normal, WC normal, but only the hemoglobin is slow. So abdominal examination and inspection in the pitting edema. So edema, hypoalbuminemia, as well as the proteinuria, massive proteinuria. Nephrotic syndrome. So, focus on to the examination point. She had symmetrical joint abnormal consistent with the rheumatoid arthritis. The heart was rate was 90 beats per minute, and her blood pressure measured 140 90 millimeter mark. David was not raised. Both heart sounds were normal, and the chest was clear. A 64 year old woman with the rheumatoid arthritis presented with the swollen ankles. She was diagnosed as having rheumatoid arthritis over 16 years ago and had been relatively well controlled on NSS until seven months back when her joint pains and swelling required the addition of penicillamide to control her symptoms. The patient had a passage of hypertension for took bendoflometide. So yes, penicillamide, pitting edema, hyponatremia, uh, sorry, hypoalbuminemia and also proteinuria, yes, the nephrotic syndrome. So we should stop the penicillamide is the best step that will be benefited. So as a heavy protein, you are showing ankles, penicillamine, membranes, nephropathy within 6 to 12 months of initiation of the drug. Protein is in virtually all cases of stopping the drug, but this can take several months. Other causes of heavy protein, of course, is a gold therapy, and also renal amyloidosis is a recognized cause of heavy protein. Well, it's possible that the patient may have the renal amyloidosis. The relationship of the proteinuria to the initiation of penicillin points to the drug induced membranous nephropathy. Other causes of renal disease of uh, rheumatoid arteries, the analgesic nephropathy, focus in glomerulus nephritis, and also rheumatoid vasculitis. All are characterized by the blood in the urine. Analgesic nephropathy is once again secondary to NSAs and parasitic proteinuria is rarely severe enough to cause the nephrotic syndrome. And FHGS is excluded by the absence of the red cells in the urine. And rheumatoid vasculitis once again has a predilections for the skin and peripheral and nervous system in very rare circumstances may affect the kidneys. It is more likely in patients the severe disease, nodule formation, high titer, so rheumatoid factor and hypocomplementemia. So as somebody box with the yes, uh, RA and renal involvement, as we talked, right, the nephrotic syndrome and NSAs. So here's the drugs GP, MGN, and also renal amyloidosis, NSAs, also MC, MCD, ATIN, and also RPN, and analgesic nephropathy, the non nephrotic range proteinuria, and really nephrotic syndrome. And also FHGS hematuria should present all along with the proteinuria and rheumatoid vasculitis, also the skin, rheumatoid nodules, peripheral neuropathy, and in case of basically the severe rheumatoid arthritis, rheumatoid factor very, very high and also hypocomplementary, mainly. So here's the nephrotic syndrome, NSS. We need to keep in our minds these two important things, and only the analgesic nephropathy, yes. There is non nephrotic range proteinuria and the hematuria for the FHGS as well as the rheumatoid vasculitis. Yes, the stop penicillin the best answer. And the questions, right. Would the, would the first investigation would be performed to evaluate the cause of her breathlessness. VQ scan, right, what do we do for the VQ scan? And also PFTs, bronchial wheel lavage for pneumocystis, gerovesi, HRCD test, and color Doppler echocardiography. So starting with the yes answer options, third step to think about some of the important points that what you do, would know. VQ scan, basically we do for the pulmonary embolism, 
pulmonary function test to look for whether it's obstructive lung defect or restrictive lung defect and to diagnose with the KCO especially for the pulmonary fibrosis. But for bronchial villal lavage for pneumocystis, zero vessel for the, yes, pneumocystis carrying pneumonia or zero vessel pneumonia, HRCD test for pulmonary fibrosis and color echocardiography for, yes, uh, cardiac abnormalities. So, yes, uh, the breathlessness, so immediately after the third step that we need to focus on the scenarios starting with the data, the oxygen saturation on the ER was 97 percent but desaturated for 84 percent after walking two minutes means saturation yes desaturation after exercise or exertional desaturation that is the important points here that you need to think about but the chest x-ray is typically normal here. On examination heart rate, 78 dysmar, blood pressure, 110, 70, JVP, not raised, heart sounds were normal, and chest was clear. And all the findings that the cardiovascular system is absolutely normal here, according to the findings here. She was on NSS and methotrexate for control or rheumatoid arthritis, and there was no history of cough, productive of sputum. So cough, no productive sputum once again, that is excluding the diagnosis methotrexate induced or the rheumatoid lungs, means the pulmonary fibrosis or maybe the bronchitis is less likely diagnosis. But the 58-year-old female was diagnosed previously presented three months is a progressive shortness of breath. So he had the shortness of breath with the desaturation, exertional. So let's see some of the explanations, then we'll come back here. So the challenging question, progressive dyspnea with oxygen dissection during exercise in patients with rheumatoid are suggestive of the pulmonary fibrosis. However, multiple pulmonary emboli, yes, may also present a similar fashion. The presence of sharp chest pains does not differentiate small pulmonary emboli from pulmonary fibrosis due to rheumatoid arthritis because sharp chest pain is common to both. The absence of inspiratory crackles in normal chest are not characteristic of rheumatoid lung disease. So in a rheumatoid lung disease of course the chest structure should be abnormal and crackles should be there and pulmonary fibrosis and obliterative bronchiolitis having an abnormal X-ray as well. Why is it still possible that the patient's symptoms are related to the direct to the rheumatoid arthritis or the treatment of rheumatoid arthritis? The diagnosis of pulmonary embolism should be considered. Therefore, the first investigation of patient is presenting in this fashion, that is a VQ scan or CTP. The identification of treatment of pulmonary embolism should prevent further pulmonary emboli. Absence of fever is against the pneumocystis carrying pneumonia. A box will be helpful for the SS box that is a progressive dyspnea with exercise induced desaturation in rheumatoid arthritis. Of course, that we will think about the pulmonary fibrosis, the most common presentation of progressive dyspnea or ALD. But in that case, the rheumatoid lungs and also CFA, IPF are also MTS induced. And bronchiolitis obliterant. So in that case, that we'll get the Crackles is the important points in pulmonary fibrosis. We already learned that the CCC, yes, so crackles. So if we write down in chronically, we need crackles for the fibrosis. Next is the bronchiolitis obliterans, also once again having the obstructive airway pictures means the vesicular with prolonged expressions and expiratory ronchi will be found, means obstructive lung features in the bronchiolitis of veterans and pulmonary embolism, the chest findings in normal can be possible and VQ scan, the diagnostic points and also the PCP once again, that is a pneumocystis carrying with the bronchial will levels the silver stain. So yes, my dear, this is very important, the exertional dyspnea 
or we can say progressive dyspnea on exercise induced desaturation is a pulmonary fibrosis bronchiolitis or obliterance pulmonary embolism and pneumocystis can a pneumonia that should be remembered so RN respiratory com complications is a fine and respiratory complication probably ILD because the investing formal spirometry with the KCO early interstitial fibrosis may not be any final x-ray respiratory test to reveal the reduced lung volumes and reduced KCO the summary box of the pulmonary fibrosis pneumonitis proliferation pleurisy pulmonary nodules Kaplan syndrome and bronchiolitis of later cell of pulmonary embolism there are some of the important reports and study that has shown that, that the rheumatoid artery is strongly associated with the DVT and also pulmonary embolism because of a lot of associated features that make the patient at risk of developing the DVT as well as the pulmonary embolism. So I put the two categories of study of associations with the DVT and pulmonary embolism with the rheumatoid arthritis and also here you can just read only one time that you can understand rheumatoid artery is having a good relation with the pulmonary embolism. So once again that the exercise induced desaturation. Of course the pulmonary fibrosis is the first and second bronchiolitis obliterates. Second. Third that we can think right that is a pulmonary embolism and pneumocystis current pneumonia. So these four diagnoses that we should put and keep in our mind for exercise induced desaturations. And first that we say the pulmonary fibrosis that the crackles absent clinically so we can think about this less like a possibility. Second thing that we learned that bronchiolitis open so once again the obstructive airway findings will be present also once again the cough having some of the bronchiolitis obliterants the features we have. And third that the New cystis can in new money, yes. So the bronchial villain level is the diagnostic test, but the new cystis can in new money. In that case, the X ray findings can be abnormal, but sometimes can be normal. But this can be keep in our mind the fourth step. But pulmonary embolism is, is a serious. So we should keep in our mind at least to to do a test of the VQ scan or CTP and also provided that the pulmonary embolism that we'll study in another chapter of pulmonary embolism based on the well scoring. So you should go for pulmonary embolism likely or less likely. So probability, clinical probability test that we do based on them once again that we should go, we should think about the pulmonary embolism is a likely diagnosis and that should be, the test should be done the VQ scan. especially in this scenario. So first individual would be performed to evaluate the cause of her breath and say VQ scan is a likely diagnosis, likely answer. So another point is a simple case of multiple joint pains, means the rheumatoid arthritis. We, we learned in, in video clips that it will see that the poor means the periarticular osteopenia and osteoporosis are for rheumatoid arthritis. The very typical pictures are shown here, yes. So this is the periarticular osteopenia and soft tissue swelling, especially the proximal interphalangeal joints. Yes, there is a loss of joint space and erosions. Yes, the pathognomonic features I said, the erosion means the erosion, the rheumatoid arthritis. And this is also another picture, so yes, MCP means the metacarbophalangeal joints, periarticular osteopenia, osteoporosis. And the role of imaging in rheumatoid arthritis, of course, there is also another photograph, all right, is given for you. Yes, erosive atrophy, means erosion is important points for the rheumatoid arthritis. So, somebody talk for the rheumatoid arthritis and some references are given here. So, yes, my dear, starting from the before, before ending, then I'd like to recap once again the boxes, as is box that is the rheumatoid arthritis complications. There is radio FM. Next box once again, the rheumatoid arthritis with the ocular complications. Yes, once again the 
unilateral radii painless, unilateral radii and episcleritis scleritis painless, episcleritis is painful scleritis. And also the cornea, cataract, chloroquine, and extraocular muscles that is the paralyzed penicillin mine induced. And episcleritis scleritis is the severe scleritis, the severe systemic involvement. and steroid is the treatment should be started and rheumatoid arthritis anemia once again FGHI and rheumatoid arthritis and renal involvement once again NS and NSAIDs and next talk that is the uh, rheumatoid arthritis also once again that the renal involvement NS and NSAIDs and also we are adding analgesic and FHGS and also the rheumatoid vasculitis and also we are adding that, that exercise induced desaturations, progressive dyspnea and rheumatoid arthritis, once again pulmonary fibrosis, bronchiolitis of deterrence, pulmonary embolism and PCP. And these are the respiratory complications that we learned. Yes, my dear, I hope that the rheumatoid arthritis and their complications and the S boxes will be helpful. Thank you. Thank you very much, my dear.